Lucid is going parabolic just over the past Let's say one week up 127%. Can we put up these charts on LCID? One month up 187%. Yeah. And what I find interesting is you listen to a guy like Keith who said he was laddering as, as the stock went down because he saw potential in there. Right. By the same token, two days ago, Morgan Stanley cut the price target from $10 <laughs> to $5. What a miss on that one because now yeah. it's at 1327 well, that's what I love about strategists, right? They make fortune tellers look good. And Keith, <laughs> dinner's on you, man, with your uh, trading wins on Tesla this week. You take me to Sizzler. Thank you. Um, but no, I think the problem here is I, I got to take the other side of this. I know you, Keith and I sometimes do take the other side. Sure. Is this just seems like a lot of speculation right now. Like there was a huge okay. short position against Lucid, so that's kind of a short squeeze you're seeing. The fact that Bitcoin is back up to like 23,000. And you saw this when the tech bubble burst. When it burst, you had these magnificent rally in tech stocks that would end up just being what you would call like a dead cat bounce. Mm -hmm. And I think you're seeing the same thing in tech here right now. I still think Tesla's overvalued. I think that, you know, look at Microsoft the other day. Their, their growth is slowing. It still trades at like 25 times forward earnings. So I think valuations are still too high in tech. Don't get seduced here would be my advice. Okay, well, uh, don't get seduced here. The S&P is now at 4,090. We've got the Dow. This is session high up of 185 points to 34,134. And the volatility index is down for the sixth straight day. The VIX looks to close at its lowest level, I believe, in the, for the year. I mean, one year low. Below 1835 would be the lowest since January 12th of last year. Yeah. What does no. that tell you? I mean, I think we're in a bull market, 100%. Outside of tech, which I think is a little bit more of a dead cat bounce, I mean, look, bottom line is economic data has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You just said it. We got inflation coming down. The CPE number was good. Um, I think in addition to that, yesterday with the GDP number coming in better than expected. And if you look at markets, they trade between the gap between reality and what we think is going to happen. And I think the problem last year is everyone was just a little too negative on where the economy mm -hmm. is. Um, and I think what you're seeing right now is that gap's coming in. Like, wait a second, we might not go into a recession. And you're hearing a lot of strategists and economists change their tune because it's just not as dire as we've heard. Hasbro, Ryan Payne, Hasbro announced that it is knocking down 15% of its workforce. It really had some bad news here. Uh, they, they had said as well that they are going to uh, really miss on the holiday quarter when it comes to sales. Yeah, and I think that is a little bit troublesome. Like, what is retail sales going to look like for last quarter? Toys, um, no less, during Christmas. Yeah, during Christmas. So I'm a little bit surprised because I think the consumer has been relatively strong. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think this year, when you think about, like, what's going to drive everything, it's going to be China, right? The reopening of China is such a huge component to the global economy um, that I think that's going to drive everything. So even if things are a little bit slow last year, like with, with buying toys and goods in, in particular, I think a lot of consumer spending has gone away from that to travel, going on experiences and things like that. So I think bottom line is I still think the consumer is strong, even though that's, that's not indicative of more problems to come, I guess.